Fans are giving lucrative endorsement deals to young children on YouTube and Instagram, raising questions about whether their young followers should be seeing that kind of marketing. Samia was an influencer before she could talk. Her parents, Adam and Latoya Ali, are influencers themselves and began chronicling Samia's impending arrival on YouTube and Instagram in 2014, once Ms. Ali learned she was pregnant. Samia's birth video is on YouTube, so she's pretty much been born into social media, Mr. Ali said. Samia is now 4 and has 143,000 followers on Instagram and 203,000 subscribers on YouTube. Her feeds are mostly populated with posts of her posing and playing, but they also feature paid promotions for brands like Crayola and Homestyle Harvest Chicken Nuggets. There are instances when Samia can't verbatim get the message out, Mr. Ali, who lives in the Atlanta area, said of the promotional posts. Sometimes, their talking points are not kid talk, so Latoya would need to appear, or myself, to relay those because those are key deliverables that the brands want. Welcome to the world of kidfluencers. Brands have flocked to influencers, individuals, famous or not, with large followings on social media, for years, hoping their online popularity will prompt their fans to buy the products they vouch for. Then child influencers started appearing on their parents' profiles, a surreal but seemingly harmless offshoot of this phenomenon. Now, advertisers like Walmart, Staples and Mattel are bankrolling lucrative endorsement deals for toddlers and tweens with large followings and their own verified profiles on YouTube and Instagram. As a result, children too young to make their own accounts on the platforms are being turned into tastemakers. Instagram, owned by Facebook, and YouTube, which is part of Google, are designed for adults in large part because of a federal privacy law that protects children under 13. Bios for many of the younger influencers on Instagram note that the pages are run by parents, and YouTube channels are presumably registered to their guardians. Because they say their platforms are 13 and older zones, technology companies do not have to comply with federal rules that limit targeted advertising and data collection. But Josh Golan, executive director of the Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood, said the companies had no incentive to keep children off the sites. And as TV ratings continue to fall and children spend more time online, advertisers are spending more money to reach them there. The fact that brands are using actual children as influencers is a very clear sign that they're targeting children that they know are on these platforms, Mr. Golan said. That can mean big money for the families of kidfluencers. Kyler Fisher, the father of two-year-old identical twins who have more than two million followers on Instagram, said a sponsored post on the girl's account could fetch between $10,000 and $20,000. The twins, Tatum and Oakley, have promoted car seats and carnival cruise lines on Instagram. They are also central to the success of their parents' YouTube channel, Kyler and Mad, which has about three million subscribers. Promotions on the family YouTube channel can draw $25,000 to $50,000. Fans are so interested in the family that their third child, due the first week of March, already has 112,000 Instagram followers. My kids complete the package, man, Mr. Fisher said. If we didn't have the girls, I can't imagine being as far as we are. Another parent shared the prices commanded by the parent's child on the condition of anonymity, citing concern that the disclosures could harm negotiations with brands. The parent said brands might pay $10,000 to $15,000 for a promotional Instagram post while a sponsored YouTube video might earn $45,000. A 30 to 90 second shout out in a longer video can cost advertisers between $15,000 and $25,000. Brands are also pursuing children with smaller followings. The toy company Melissa and Doug emailed parents about a six-week influencer campaign last summer, offering payments and free toys for weekly Instagram posts of their children having fun with the toys. The company said it would pay $10 per 1,000 followers for individual Instagram posts and $5 per 1,000 followers for Instagram story posts. The rise of this kind of advertising has raised questions involving fair compensation, oversight and work permits, especially since child labor guidelines vary by state. Andrea Faville, a YouTube spokeswoman, said that the site didn't allow anyone under 13 to make or own accounts and that it worked closely with experts, nonprofit organizations and others in our industry to protect families using our services.
YouTube came under fire last month after lewd comments by pedophiles were discovered on innocent videos of children, the company has since said it will suspend comments on most videos of minors. Some channels that can't demonstrate a low risk of predatory behavior will keep comments but require moderators, the company said. It remains to be seen if disabling comments will hurt the kind of connections kidfluencers try to establish with their fans. Sravanti Dev, a spokeswoman for Instagram, said that while the platform prohibited users 12 and under, their parents or representatives could create profiles for them as long as it is clear in the bio information that the account is run by the parent or representative. Michelle Foley's six-year-old daughter, Ava, and her best friend, Everlay, also six, have more than a million followers on their shared Instagram and YouTube accounts. YouTube's analytics say Ava and Everly's viewers are largely between the ages of 25 and 44, Ms. Foley said, but she said she thought the core audience was between 8 and 18. When we go out, parents never know who we are, but kids do, Ms. Foley said. Alex Chavez Munoz, a founder of Viral Talent, which works with child influencers, also disputed the data.